Have you seen those big VTuber concerts and gone, wow, I want to sing and dance on stage just like that? Well, me too, but not everyone wants to join a corporation, nor do they have the money for VR gear, full body tracking, a studio, and whatever else this entails. But lucky for me and you, there are a lot of basic aspects of a 3D concert that can be done with a tight budget, and that's exactly what I did. During the winter, I hold a little winter recital, which is basically just a holiday themed karaoke. But last winter, I wanted to make it different. I wanted to make it 3D. When listing out what I needed to make this come true, here's what I came up with. One, a 3D model that fit the season. Two, a program to use for the stage. Three, a program to use for full body tracking. And four, a basic mic setup that would allow me to use full body tracking while still be able to sing and use the mic. And after some planning, here are the solutions that I came up with for each thing. Let's get into the details about each part individually. For the 3D model, I use a program called VRoid Studio. If you've been in the VTubing scene for a while, I'm sure you're very familiar with it. But basically, VRoid Studio is a program that allows you to create your own anime style 3D models with little to no experience in 3D modeling. You can adjust the sliders to edit various aspects of the model's appearance and edit the textures of the provided bases to create your own unique clothing designs. While super convenient, there are certain aspects about the program that make creating one-to-one -one versions of your characters a bit tricky. But in my own case, this was sufficient enough to create some sort of version of my character. I didn't need it to be perfect, I just needed to get the point across. Editing the textures for the outfits was also not a daunting task for me personally as I am familiar with drawing digitally. But if there's something you don't want to do, then I recommend looking on places like Pixiv Booth to find both paid and free Vroid assets that you can use to create your character. Just make sure that you read the permissions and details first. If you already have a 3D model made from scratch in a program like Blender, then that works perfectly fine too as long as the model is in .vrm format. This is the format of Vroid Studio. Or the model can be in the .war the format. This is the format for the program that we will be using for the stage, which is also known as Wardo. Creating a .wardo formatted model will require some work in Unity, and in my own case, that's something I had wanted to avoid from the first place, which is why I went with Vroid Studio. Wardo is a free 3D VTubing program that allows for a variety of different motion capture methods and is stocked with many 3D assets such as props and stages available for use. There's also a large variety of poses and animations available to use as well. And if the base props and stages aren't to your liking, there's also a section in the Steam Workshop page as well as in the program itself that you can use to see other assets uploaded by other users as well. I highly recommend looking at these pages for all sorts of cool and even silly props and stages to use. The program has an onboarding assistant that will take you step by step into the process of loading your character, tracking, and 3D environment which is incredibly helpful for anyone new to the program. For my winter concert, I chose to use Wardo's Christmas mini stage as the scene to perform. If you're into 3D modeling, you can also create your own stage in a program like Blender and format it as a Wardo file for use in the program. But again, I wanted to avoid using Unity as much as possible this time around. Just know that it's possible. To really create that concert feeling, I needed multiple camera angles. In the free version of War, though, you can only create eight cameras. So I did my best to pick camera angles that I wanted. I referenced some of the angles in existing 3D VTuber concerts, and I highly recommend doing so as well to get a nice idea of professional camera work if you're unfamiliar with it like myself. In the blueprint section of the program, I utilize a tool that is available in the workshop or discover tab, which is called loop cameras. Once I made my cameras, I added them to the setting and set the transition time to about 20 seconds. Putting all that together, I was able to create a self transitioning set of camera angles similar to how they have it in the concerts. Just as an aside, Wardo does have a paid version known as Wardo Pro, which includes a director mode that is much more organized and allows for multiple camera angle viewing, much like a professional setup. Wardo Pro is available for indie VTubers, but you need to contact them for pricing. However, if you ever find yourself in the position of wanting more of their features and are able to afford it, just know that it is an option. But for the rest of us, the free version is still a great and versatile program, especially as it receives more updates and assets. The biggest financial hurdle for doing something like a 3D concert for me was having access to full body tracking. While there are various price points for VR tracking available out there, I wasn't sure if it was something I was ready to invest a lot of money in. That's where XR Animator comes in. XR Animator is a free AI motion capture program that can capture full body motion with just a webcam. There's a downloadable window and Linux version as well as a web app version that can work in certain supported web browsers such as Chrome. 
XR Animator boasts a variety of tracking features such as AR kit compatibility, ability to record and export motion capture, customize the background with 3D or 2D, and many more features. The main aspect of the program that I used was the VMC protocol in order to send the full body tracking to Ardo. While this isn't a comprehensive tutorial, here's the general setup that I used. When XR Animator boots up, you're able to drag an MMD or VRM model and have it load as the model being used. From then on, you click on the webcam icon to set which webcam to use for pose tracking. The most important thing after this is to click on the icon that says VMC and then make sure that VMC is enabled. This is how Wardo is able to know what tracking data is being sent. I recommend messing with the settings of XR Animator to better suit your own setup. Adjust it so that things are less intensive on your computer, your ideal webcam position, motion capture sensitivity, and many other aspects that may affect the quality of the tracking. Once that is set up in XR Animator, you can choose VMC protocol for the motion capture option in Wardo, and ta-da! Now you have full body tracking with just a webcam. Here is probably the part I spent the most time thinking about and problem solving. In order to be able to move around and dance, a microphone that isn't bulky and in the way is ideal. There are two choices that you can consider when attempting to solve this issue. This was my initial choice and I ended up buying a couple of secondhand Bluetooth mics to test it out. Unfortunately, my setup hindered the ability for me to use either of these microphones for the final concert, but if it works for your own setup, I would try these as they allow for the most free movement while performing. There are many Bluetooth microphones out there and I will suggest doing research into finding out which is best for you in regards to budget and compatibility. Sometimes you just can't beat the classics. Since Bluetooth microphones did not work out for me, I opted for a mic stand. The way I had it set up, I used my usual desk mic stand, raised it to the highest it would allow, and placed it on the desk next to my space where I was performing. It wasn't pretty, but it worked. For most, if not all of the performance, I was holding the microphone anyway, but having the mic stand there was useful. Depending on your setup, such as how far away you are from the webcam or the computer, you may have to get a longer mic cable to accommodate the distance. If you happen to have a proper tall mic stand, then I would recommend that for sure. A tip I have regardless of which microphone method you choose, but especially if you opt for the Bluetooth microphone, is to use audio plugins to improve your audio. OBS has some built-in audio plugins that can help improve the quality of your vocals as well as get rid of any background noise that you may have. I found that this was especially helpful for the Bluetooth microphones as their bass quality was just not as good as my regular microphone. There are many great tutorials on this topic online, so I recommend doing some research and finding what works best for you. Since I was moving around, my wired headphones were not able to follow me while I performed. In order to monitor the audio, I had to use Bluetooth headphones. For this, you can use just about any pair that you may have on hand, or a budget one will do just fine. What's important to know is that the Bluetooth headphones can have a delay in sound monitoring in OBS. This means that if you opt to monitor your mic audio while performing, there's a high chance that it will become off sync at some point and could throw you off. My solution to that was simply to turn off the audio monitoring for my microphone. There are likely other solutions out there, but this was the most reliable solution that wouldn't hinder the performance. If I wanted to make sure the sound was being output, I would just make sure to look at the audio levels on OBS itself. And that's it. To summarize, you can create your own 3D model with Vroid, utilize XR Animator for full body tracking, and then bring it all together in Wardo. Use the various props and stages to create your own unique 3D concert. Remember, this is just a basic setup and just one way that you can put on your own 3D concert. Me too means about having fun and being you. My name is Universe Cat and I hope this helped. Bye bye.